So this is just going to be a quick video on how to set up your throttle curve on a Devo 7 transmitter that you get with your Walkera F210. Now, I hate video editing, so I'm not going to edit together a, a concise video. I'm just going to ramble on about everything that I found out uh, on how to adjust it, and then you guys can skip through it and rewind it for all that sort of stuff. But just to give you an overview, I drew up this little chart of what we're trying to do. Is This is how your throttle curve is set up when you got it. There's seven points. There's L, which is low. 1, 2, M for mid, which is when your stick is in the middle. 3, 4, and high, which is full throttle, 100%. And they're just in a line right now. And mine is 28% is a hover. So that's hover. Everything above is punching throttle and everything below is down. So when you're trying to do all these maneuvers, you got this little bit of room down here and then all the rest is acceleration. So if you want to kind of go slow and work your way through things, you're doing it all in this little bit of the throttle stick and the rest is just basically, a huge portion of it is just a punch out. So, all I want is just a little end. I want to punch a punch out and I want the rest to be control. So when people say expo and throttle curve, this is what they mean. It's usually linear, but you want to set it up to have something like this where it looks more like a curve. You have L, 1, 2, mid, 3, 4, high, and you want to change those settings so it's more like a curve. So now your 28% hover is more in the middle instead of way down at the bottom. And then you, you can do your punch outs with the top and use the bottom for better control. Now the, the Devo 7 is one of the worst transmitters I've ever had for setting this up. But I'm going to try and just hold it here and give a quick overview of how I did it. Now I set mine so to my dual rate switch which is this one up here so this would be stock settings you can see I don't know if you can see it right now but it, throttle is at zero but on my setting when I flip it down you'll see throttle is at five percent so I did that so when I drop the throttle all the way it's still at five percent which is still quite a bit of throttle you're still falling, just like you would, but you still have control. So it's like a poor man's air mode, where I can do flips and rolls super fast and still have full control when I drop it, but I'm still falling at the same speed, or very close to it. And if you're going to do that, you, to arm it, you either start always in normal, so it's at zero, so you can still arm it by holding it over, or you just th set up your throttle hold, which is this one. So I have my throttle hold set up, so no matter where I'm at with the throttle, I flip that and it goes to zero. That's your throttle hold if you haven't set that up. So there's two ways to do it, but let's just go through. You hit this button right here until you see it go. See, that's why I, I, I hate this. It's already confusing, but... Then you hit left until you see that over on function. Then once you do that, well, let's back up. Let's say if you don't want to accidentally mess things up, you can go to the model, hit enter, and copy, and copy it so you have more than one. And then you can do all the changes you want, and you still have both models in there. So you can copy your model if you want to do that. But I'm sure you guys probably already know that. But let's go over to function. Hit enter, and you're going to want to go down, throttle, throttle hold, that's if you want to set up the throttle hold, but you want to go to throttle curve, hit enter. This is if you, yes and no, yes is let's say you're bound to the 210, then as you're doing the settings, it's going to spin up the motors and all that, or you hit no if you don't want it to. I just leave it on yes because I'm never changing this when I'm bound, but that's what that means. 
You hit enter, now your position. Which position of the switch are you going to change? If you want to leave zero stock and have it change when you go to one, go down until it's position one. Then hit down. This is where you turn it on or off. Mine's already set to on. If yours is on off, then just hit the L to go to on. That's what makes this menu so confusing. You never know what the words mean with their three letter shortened and but anyways you hit down now here's your points so these are the seven points that was on that chart so L and weirdly when you hit L which you would think would be down goes up so that's already confusing but there's L 1 2 M which is your midpoint 3 4 and 8 which is high so you pick the one you want to start and if you want to get uh, basically the throttle up which I I know people will say it's not like air mode that completely changes your PIDs and all that. I understand that, but that's just an easy way to explain. It. To get the throttle up, that's that's going to be L that you want to change. So you go down. Now I have mine set to five percent because that gives me quick rolls and everything. So I have that to five percent. Then go up to point one. Now it's it's usually inhibited, but you want to switch all your points to active. Hit down, then I go to 12.5% for my next one. So, it's active. Point 0.2, active. I got that set to 20%. Go back up. Midpoint, active, 30%. So that's about kind of where my hover is, 20. So now the midpoint is your hover instead of, you know, being quite a bit of thrust. Then 3, active, 50%. 4, I got 70%, so now we're making quicker jumps towards the, tw the top of the throttle. So when I punch it, it, it gives me my good punches. But I have a lot more control on the bottom. Then the high point. Now what I noticed is there wasn't a lot of difference between 90% throttle and 100. So I put mine on 90 because when I look at it, I couldn't tell a difference. It felt just as punchy, but it saved, especially if you have a cheaper battery, it saved those big, those big battery sags in the voltage. So I still get, it. it's basically self-regulating to the best throttle without really sagging the voltage. So I got mine set to 90. You can set it to whatever you want. You can play around with these curves. And if you want to set it up for different switches, you can keep going down for this switch. So you, you can play around with those menus on which switch you want to do it. But that's basically how you set up uh, your throttle curve. So there's a couple ways you can exit out, you can be in the function menu, there's a couple ways to test that this working right. You can go down to monitor, hit enter, and go down to your throttle. And that, that'll show you basically how you have it set up. You can flip your switch and see that it's going to ne from negative 100 to 100, and when you flip it, it's going from plus 80 to minus 90. So you can check that there, or the way that's easiest for me to check it is just on the main screen. I hate, when the model's not showing, it'll show you throttle. So up is 0%, up to 100%. And when I flip it down, it's 90% to 5%. And you hold it in the middle, that's 29%. If I flip it to stock, there's that stupid model. It's 44. So the middle is 29 and 44. So that way you can confirm it's working. And that's basically what you're doing and what they're talking about when, when they mention throttle curves. So this is basically what you're making. But uh, I found it to be a, a huge boost in, in slow performance. Anyways, I uh, hope this helps you guys.